Why, hello there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. My name is Dogbot333, and welcome back to Hearts Farm for the New World Last Days of Europe as the Ural Military District. Now, in the last video, we um, explained what we're doing. So instead of uh, picking one path, we're going to be doing both. But we got to pick one path right now, just because that's the nature of the beast. So, the people of Russia are gearing up for election season. An idea once unthinkable, scant decades before. Now it's up to the Russian people to decide their fate of the nation and their leaders. Political parties, both big and small, are preparing for their supporters and their backers across the nation. Thousands of volunteers, campaign staff, and candidates make ready to part to the rallies, tours, speeches, and debates that will dominate the headlines for the coming months. Candidates will be scrutinized, issues debated, and by the end, millions of voters will be able to make their votes heard by the powers that be. So we're going to be campaigning first off for the Army and the Rodina. We're campaigning for the UKGS. We're going with Batov to start things off. So, with democracy ensured, we are finally free to hold elections between our parties and political factions. Here are the polls. Interesting stuff. Now we got the status of the district. Our victory in Western Siberia has brought us many incredible opportunities, as well as a host of new problems. The most pressing issues are remnants of revisionists and Black League, which have now become terrorist organizations that must be hunted down. But our issues don't stop at domestic terrorism. The power of acting present in the newly conquered territories threatens the stability of the entire district. These areas must be pacified, stabilized, and integrated, both economically and politically, before we can capitalize on our successes and look to the rest of Russia. So we'll go ahead and deal with some... We'll deal with the bandit holdouts first. I think we'll go ahead and limit campaigning there. Southern Urals, I'm not worried about at all. Arctic Russia, I don't think we can even campaign there. What? I'm thinking the Trans Urals. Or should I say the Trans Urais? My mistake. And that's really about it, it would seem. So, since we have them, and we're going to try to keep them, let's go ahead and check out Pavel Batov, the modern Suvaro. Pretty decent bonuses to military stuff. I'll take it. <coughs> the soldiers under the command of Pavel Ivanovic Batov often affectionately call him our Suvarov, both for his appearance and his manners, referring to the legendary Russian general who was known for his military genius, his humble nature, and his fondness for the ordinary Russian soldiers. It's unlikely that the general himself acknowledges or evokes the comparison, but one cannot be blamed for seeing such parallels between the leaders of the Ural militarist government and the famed Russian hero of the past. In the darkest days of Nazi push into Russia, Batov became acquainted with Konstantin Rokozovsky, with whom he formed a personal and and professional bond that lasts until the latter's death. The camaraderie of the two generals became a subject of thrill and legends, and tales narrated across the entire S Siberia intertwining truth and fiction. The events they went through together, the wars that they fought back to back as one, all became ingrained into the modern Russian cultural memory. At the funeral of his old friend, Batov vowed to carry the banner of the departed general's cause and preserve the legacy of the line of Siberia, reorganizing the forces of a Ural military district under his command and establishing his emergency power within the boundaries of war in Russia. Batov seeks to rethink the role of the army and society, serve not merely as a protector of the Russian people, but their guide in times of anarchy and devastation. Well, there we go. Let's go ahead... And I think it's clear, the army knows best. Our nation is not yet in a safe enough position to begin implementing democracy. The warlord era of Russia may be coming to a close, but Russia is far from uni unified. Large super states that have arisen from the ashes of the Soviet Union are just as dangerous, if not more so, than any threat we faced before. While we certainly support the system on principle, for the sake of people, we can't yet allow military rule to end. If that means playing dirty in the upcoming referendum, then so be it.
Valbatov sat in his office chair, happy to get some peace and quiet. Law had changed in the past for years, and he'd seen himself jump from general all the way to becoming the marshal of the entire West Siberian district. With his new responsibilities came new challenges as well. The unification of a region that re had remained divided for a decade wouldn't be easy. Administrating a region five times larger than what was previously controlled by the military's district proved to be a real challenge for the district's garrisons and Batov's rule. Yet that wasn't even half what Batov had on his hands. Administrating was one thing. Integrating areas controlled by different warlords with very different ideologies from ours was no easy feat. Batov knew a lot of hard work had to be put in before West Siberia can truly appear unified. As well as a difficult political situation, Batov also faced a problem with a destroyed economy. West Siberia had been wrecked by the constant war since the last decade. Large funds would need to be put into reconstruction so our economy can even compare to our rivals on the border. As well as all the dem problems of uniting West Siberia has brought to the table, the democratic movement yet led by Yeltsin has also been gaining more and more support. The people began into favor a more democratic government as the region stabilizes. And elections may need to occur if Batov wants to move forward into a democratic government or legitimize his rule. And lastly, the death of Marshal Rokozovsky has put a lot of pressure on Batov himself. He would have to work in the legacy of Rokozovsky to f take control of West Siberia and strengthen the district enough to finally reclaim all of Russia. There was a lot Batov had to do if he wanted to be the second great marshal, but he had to start somewhere. The marshal's legacy is in his hands. The battle for Italia. I guess we'll see what ends up happening there. I um that works. That will work beautifully. So the LPR is campaigning. Good fucking luck with that, buddy. Polling updated already, even though really nothing has happened. Shopping's actually wouldn't be a bad place to campaign in, I'm thinking, but let's not do that quite yet. So we got our doctrine going. Let's get some anti-tank going on top of that. Gunfire filled the bat and its hideout squad as a Zahar squadron surrounded the last bandit, not wanting to go down without a fight. This bandit hideout had been troublesome for the district, raiding villages, and farms across its territory. It had taken Zahar's troops months to track it down. In a fight, though, the bandits were no match for the Third Army. Zahar, leaning, leaving cover, f opened fire once again. A hit. The bandit went down, blood splattering on the walls. This was the last of them. Most of the bandits surrendered on sight, not wishing to fight m the more heavily armed 3rd Army. Those that had fought back had gotten what they deserved. Ordering his men to clear out the bodies and the wounded, Zahar scanned the rest of the rooms one more time just to make sure no bandits were left hiding. There were no bandits left, but Zahar did find lots of valuables. Jewelry, money, precious vases, and even a few paintings littered to rooms, littered the rooms of the bandits. One thing that stood out to him, though, a doll, probably belonging to a young girl. Are the bandits really that cheap? Just to take a doll from a little girl? Well, he knew his men would love to keep all the riches to themselves, the Third Army had a duty. It was to serve the Russian people. Some of these were probably the only precious goods some people owned. So Har would make sure that they would return to the rightful owners no matter what, especially the doll. The Third Army exists to protect the people, not rob them. There we go, let's go after with Kaganovic loyalists while we're here. What do we need to put into it? We got early fighters. I'm thinking Cass. Cass and some fighters. A little extra in that regard. I think we'll um, suppress opposition voting a little bit. I guess Southern Urals to uh, go down into uh, Chilia Binks a bit. 
What's the side of the future? The day of a referendum has arrived. Men, men and women across the nation mark time with bated breath as they await the results. Laborers from the factories and mines sit at the bars, drinks an and listening intently for what the radio announcer has to say. A group of young students wait in Capitol Square for the inevitable announcement on the loudspeakers. Soldiers in their barracks sit in groups, patiently waiting for their captains to return from high command and bring them the news. The nation sits on edge as a government bureaucrat tallies the votes and recognizes the winner to be... Well, I guess we'll figure that out soon enough, won't we? Anywho. Oh, Ireland is, uh, freaking out now. Oh, tell me is, um, doing all that. Pulling updated. Let's see. Oh yeah, we're we're winning. We are winning indeed. Oh new city factories, let's go ahead and um well build more city factories. Kurgan will be good. Chili Binks has a lot of potential, so we'll put some stuff into that. It'll take a while. I think I'll work on Kurgan, Kurgan first, then, just because I know those will be done quicker. And let's go from there. We can do the trial of the Tsar Kurganovic. I like it. Campaigning for the elections have ended, and today is when the voting will begin. Polling stations have been set up in every city across West Siberia, and once the voting is complete, West Siberia will finally have an undisputed leader. Some of the word but Vatov, using his powers, would turn the election in his favor. However, it does not appear that way, at least as the voting seems to be pretty fair across the board, at least in terms of a newly founded democracy. Ha ha ha. Suckers don't realize it. While some have complained the government has not gone far enough to implement a fair democracy, both still have a chance to win. There's no expecting who will come out on top. However, Yeltsin does win. There is no expectation of the military just giving up control of the country. Patov and his army try, will try to keep as much influence as possible in Siberia, no matter who wins. At least there are elections. <clears throat> oh, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Marshal Pavel Batov and the army have secured victory in the referendum. Batov relieved shut down a shortwave receiver and looked out at the city below him. Even with the army's underhanded tactics, he hadn't been sure they, they would take the vote. The people have had this ridiculous fascination with democracy that he couldn't get his head around. Now of all times, the people would rather be headed by some fool with no knowledge of military strategy rather than the generals that have guided the nation successfully for years. Nelson couldn't lead an army out of a paper bag, let alone at, against Germany. It couldn't be allowed to occur, especially if our enemies massing on our borders. The marshal was getting worked up now as he often got about politics. However, his thoughts were interrupted by a shining light into his eyes from the street below. He took a closer look, only to see a small boy pushing a cart on the street below, selling small baked potatoes. The cart was a large thing with a metal si little metal sign out front reflecting the light into the window. The poor boy could barely push it. But Tobe's eyes softened and he leaned back in his chair. All he did, he did for people. He did for the Russian people. They would understand that in the end. So, pretty clear victories. Uh, the LPR wins in a few places. They tied in Tumen, which is interesting, and they kind of swept in Omsk. Interesting. They're probably just salty that they lost. And so they're voting against us in, uh, against, uh, uh, us in protest. Hmm. 
well, let's just go ahead and get with the, start with the guiding hand of Marshall. The army under Marshal Pavel Botov has managed to secure victory in the elections. With the army to hold over, with the army's hold over government secured, Marshal Botov shall continue to lead the district to more victories against those who would threaten Russia and her people. War plans are to be reviewed revi and revised. Military research funding is to be doubled alongside the budget of the military itself. Under our marshal's guidance, the district will prosper and expand. Soon, we may be even be able to call ourselves Russia. I mean, we could. It's just, I don't know how well we go over now. The front, the area brother in the front are actually kind of evenly matched, which is interesting, it seems. Because they're not doing much in the way it pushes. Get training some guys, and I think Ireland uh, made peace, it seems. Okay, South Africa's beaten the Boers. Which is interesting, because they did not get much, much in the way of OFN help. Though they do got volunteers from Australia and OFN, and the uh, USA, excuse me. Lazar Kaganovic slowly stepped into the courtroom, guarded by two burly soldiers holding much more weaponry than probably necessary. He sat down on a small wooden chair, probably made comfortable on purpose. Uncomfortable on purpose, excuse me. The military judge looked down, frowning at the old man in the seat below him, who looked so small and frail. Zark Gonvik, the results of your trial have been concluded. After liberation, you are sent to be sentenced to execution for your betrayal of Russia and her people. Execution? Betrayal? Gaganovic was too angry to take it anymore. He was no traitor. Getting out of his chair and angrily pointing a wrinkled finger at his judge, he began in a tirade. No, you are the traitors. You are in my military. You fought for socialism in the motherland. Now look at where you are. You are nothing but evil fascists and dirty capitalists. I should have purged Rokosovsky when I had the chance. Sit down, Kaganovic. want to make sure it doesn't get skipped. We have come upon our decision, and it is final. You are the only man to blame for leading West Siberia down this dark path. You were your own undoing. <sighs> You'll see. The revolution will be achieved, one way or another. Soon all who stand in the way of socialism will fall. If I'm not there to see it happen, then so be it. Send him to a cell. The revolution ended or delayed. Poland and Russia is updated, even though it doesn't matter at this point. Let's hunt down the Black League remnants. Marshal Patov waited near the microphone, ready for his voice to be projected across the military, military district. He cleared his throat as he was given the signal to begin. Citizens of a district, I, Marshal Patov, have a very important announcement. Since our army has gained control of the entire region of West Siberia, our partisans and resistance fighters continue to harm our garrisons, forcing the law in these chaotic times. Order needs to be upheld, and the only way to carry it out is through military rule. That is why I am announcing that the army will continue their occupation of the newly regained territories, and martial law will continue to be in effect across the entire district until further notice. I know many of you yearn for further freedoms, however, our armed forces are the only ones who can keep you safe. Bandits and partisans will continue to be a threat until the military deals with them. Until they are dealt with, the army will be the guardians of the people. I, and every general in this district, promise you that we will do everything we can to keep you and your family safe. All I ask is that you follow these orders completely. Remember, the fate of Russia is in all of our hands. We are not the enemy. We do not wish to trample you under the boot of authoritarianism. These orders are not to hurt you, but protect you. I, too, wish we could live in more freer times, but our current situation does not allow that. Thank you for your understanding. Safety is our top priority. Here we are. Um, I think this would be good. I think we'll go this, this. And that would be good enough, perhaps for now. 
I, I want to get a check, uh, glance at the rest of this. War economy. Best and the brightest would be good. Oh yeah, this is all solid so far. Reaching out, approaching the eagle. Ooh, naval dockyards in Vorkuta, that's interesting. And then the Grand Russian Army, of course. All solid stuff, indeed. Oh, we'll just get free templates, nice. So it all seems like solid stuff. I think we'll start by establishing the Council of Generals. Get a little extra political power, mobilization speed, stability and war support, all good stuff in general. Then we'll do Russian statocracy, and then I think we'll get working on economic stuff. So even the greatest of leaders can't run a nation by themselves. A Council of Generals is to be established with the purpose of both advising the Marshal and helping carry out his directives both on the front lines and in the government. These generals will act as serve a secondary purpose. We will act as a check on the marshal's power. Should he ever begin mar making erratic decisions or begin taking actions against the stability benefit of a district, they will act and remove him as head of government. Hope the situation never degrades to such a point, but should it occur, we will be prepared. There we are. Who ended up winning? Bald man, right. That's just kind of cringe, isn't it? Cringe and boring build. The end of election season, there we go, We're done with that. Let's go working on support companies. And everything really is going up actually, which is impressive. I'm very happy with how our industry is developing. Our poverty is not good at all, let's be honest, but everything else is coming along at a relatively reasonable pace. And it's time for the trial of Dmitry Yazov. Let's get the Russian statocracy going. Our government administration is a prime example of the efficiency of the military. Soldiers regiment within an inch of their lives during their services. And keep that regimented attitude about life when they leave. These men became warriors, brave and unafraid to do what needs to be done in the moment. Our military boys are the cream of the crop and have proved how efficient, effective and trustworthy they are in government. Surely it makes sense to reserve certain positions in government for former military personnel by ensuring that important government positions go to those who have served in some capacity to ensure both the efficiency and legitimacy of our government. Plus our army professionalism will rise, which is what I'm looking forward to. Hiding election results. It was a bright, windy day in the city of Omsk. The former dead heart of the Black League. Marshal Pavel Batov stood before a particularly elaborate headstone with his entourage, taking a moment to examine the structure. Leave me. That won't be a moment. As the companions left his side, Batov moved closer to the grave and knelt down in front of the inscription. Dmitry Mikhailovich Karpyshev, 1880-1963. Reading the name already caused a wave of memories to wash over the Marshal's mind. General Garbyshev was, at one time, a man he could consider a comrade. During the Great Patriotic War, Batov would never even once consider the possibility that a man like Garbyshev was capable of taking arms against his brothers. 
And yet, here he was, a victim of his own misguided ambition to strengthen Russia's defenses, even if it cost him his soul. Perhaps, in the end, it did. Patov was feeling a curious mixture of sadness and regret. He was there when Karbyshev's mind began to drift into dark places, and he was there when the old general began to act upon his sordid thoughts. He could have tried to stop him, make an attempt to steer his comrade back on the right path, but it was far too late for that now. Kar Karbyshev, as well as the monster he had perhaps unwittingly created, was dead. And all Patov could do now was hope that he was finally able to find peace in the afterlife. After placing an old matter that once belonged to the late general at the base of the headstone, Marshal Batov stood and gave his final goodbyes to his old comrade turned adversary. If only it hadn't come to this. <sighs> they just don't groan like they used to, don't they, Dima? Kuzma Galitsky muttered as he cracked a sunflower seed in the bowl. Dmitry Dmitry Lelyushenko sitting beside him. Work was over, but the two had extra business to finish that evening, and both found themselves in the empty break room, taking a short leave from the papers. <sighs> yeah, when I was a kid, I remember they used to be saltier. I grew up in Wisto. That's where they grew all the sunflowers, you know. So you get kind of familiar with them, and these are not the ones I grew up with. Well, let's keep linked. You're from the stove? Yeah! Don't tell me you're from Rostov, too. I actually am from Taganrov. You know that small town across the bay? Really? My dad had a co worker from, from Taganrog. He used to give me treats on weekends when I was a kid. <laughs> you're kidding! My uncle Ro worked in Rostov. He took the ferry and he always brought spare candy with him. The two generals laughed as they reminisced about their childhoods. However, uh, an unnatural silence had grew in the empty room. They're probably dead, aren't they? My dad, your uncle, everyone. <sighs> the crowds must have wiped them. The pause settled on once again before Galitsky replied in return. That's why we fight, isn't it? A little extra war support. Got a lot of war support, a lot less stability when compared to it. Dmitry Yazov was thrown into a chair of a courtroom, looking up at the judge with a bloody nose and bruised eye. The murderer finally arrives at my doorstep to confess his heinous crimes. Dmitry Yazov, my fellow judges and I have completed our deliberation. With a unanimous decision, you are to be sentenced to death. Your execution by firing squad will be tonight. Guards, give this worthless man out of my sight. The judge finished his last sentence quickly, not wanting to look at Yazov any longer. Do you not want to hear my last words, Yazov said, not caring he was going to be killed soon. After all, he had expected nothing else. <sighs> Fine. What nonsense do you have to say? I just wanted to ask if you would be ready to face the coming ordeals. You have eliminated your only chance at a victory, General. With the Black League destroyed, you have destroyed all of Russia's chances with it. Only I could have led Russia through the coming storm through the great trial itself. Now Russia will only see failure and disunity. Do you really think a state with any semblance of democracy can stand united and strong against an enemy like Germany? The judge paused for a moment after his was unspeaking, shaking his head. No, no. You are the one who is wrong. Do you not see yourself as a murderer? A brute! was put a dark stain on Russia. If you were to lead our great nation, you would have destroyed as well as Russia. Perhaps. But Russia would finally have its revenge. <laughs> Take him away! And as the guards went to haul Yazov away one last time, he looked into D Dmitry Yazov's dark eyes. And he would never forget them for the rest of his life. A monster finally put down. Um, what do we want to work on? Industrial equipment would work. Let's do that. K 
Get a little bit of a boost to our GDP. Our day night cycle got toggled, that's my bad. Mm. Little bo bonus, a uh, little hit to GDP cost, but it's not the worst, I suppose. Hmm. What do we want to work on? Don't get too much in the way of civilian factories, it seems. Some building slots, yeah, but not much other than that. Let's go ahead and ease martial law. The reaction to many of our recent laws and proclamations have been rather negative. Many of our citizens have grown increasingly angry about what we've done since assuming power, and some of our citizens are even resorting to violence. In order to quell the public outrage and perhaps ease tensions with citizenry, the military government will be easing martial law and late-night curfews restrictions immediately. We plan to eventually phase out these laws altogether. Hopefully such measures will succeed in calming the people and will make a more violent response unnecessary. As have these fronts moved at all? Hello? Wagner? Zukov? It had been many years since Hamazap Babashian and Ivan Bagramian had been able to pause and think about the past. Both the revisionist and the Black League had many made any such pause difficult. Both, go, both groups scattered, the district's control of West Siberia consolidated, they could do so again. And while they did, sharing a meal and speaking Armenian all the while. As both of them had expected, talking quickly uh, to the, talk quickly turned to that of their old home, home, now long lost after the occupation. Hamazap spoke at length of his native village of Chardakil, itself ju w just within the Azeri lands and lying within the Reich Komisariat's territory. Bagramian listened with interest as, though he himself had been born in Ilitzvipol, his parents were from the village as well, and he'd heard many stories about it. As time passed, however, the conversation progressed from the past to the present, and both men expressed their sadness at Chardakil's occupation, the knowledge that they may ne never again possess a chance to see it. See it. However, Bragraman reminded his colleague the district had established for itself a strong base in Siberia and, if appropriate strategies were vigorously pursued, could progress to reunite all of Russia. If that happened, the Caucasus could be reclaimed and Shardagiki traveled to once again. That thought, Babashkian smiled, informed Bragraman that he would, if that day ever came, be honored to invite him to his old house and share a similar meal. They shook on that day and parted, both his Armenians and his friends. Someday. 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 I wanna lay down like I did on Sunday. Sverdlovsk had become a new s oops shit. Hit my microphone. God damn it. Sverdlovsk had become a new city after the military had restored order all across West Siberia and the Urals. While the city changed, Catherine had too. What once was a city entirely controlled and scheduled by the military become freer and seemingly more liberated. With communist and black leaks threats squashed, the military no longer had to take control of every citizen's lives. To Catherine, that meant everything. Back in the days of the Soviet Union, where Catherine was just a young girl, she still lived in spread laws, free with no responsibilities. After the collapse, though, life became hard. Working hours were just small portions of food for her children who ordered by the military. What time she was allowed to leave her home, she could barely handle it. Now for martial law and over and the curfews ended, Catherine could finally live life to the fullest. She'd even go outside at night and see the stars. With the military presence was still there, things had turned out for the better. Perhaps more freedom still stood in the horizon. A free Sverdlovsk. A free woman. Um. Hmm.
let's give them a meaningful life. The Marshal is a strict and in some cases harsh leader, but he's not an apathetic one. Marshal Patalva understands the plight of Comic Worker, as well as what our nation is fighting for. Effective immediately, a series of regulations and reforms are to be implemented in our industry, across a greater economy, improving workers' conditions. Specifically, his reforms will center around lowering working hours and some minor safety reforms. In turn, we shall hope to further quell dissent and shore up support for the military. The Marshal is looking out for us, the common man. Mm hmm. I was going to say we're going to get working on the economy, but I'm thinking we might as well just finish off this tree. So we can get working on influencing the southern Urals. And, uh, are they making any moves at all? Do they even have... Tr it looks like they're not really attacking. Well, this is peculiar, isn't it? Let's get some civic instruction and artillery. See what Yagoda is doing in lessons from Manchukuo. Expanding politics. Next, let's go ahead and calm down. Uh, let's calm them down. Many of our citizens are still wary of military rule. Despite the governmental and military successes of our military administration in the past, we must assuage these fears in the public and assure them that the military knows what's best for the nation and is actively working towards its betterment. A propaganda campaign highlighting our military's victories in years past, coupled with praise of military administration handling of the economy, and general governance should go a long way towards changing the hearts and minds of our citizens on military rule. Well, there we go. I'll get rid of one of these guys, just so we can have a somewhat even number for us. And Chelia Binks is making more factories, very nice. Or Kurgan. Chelia Binks will eventually, but not now. Calming their fears. Next, let's go ahead and um, establish provincial military governors. Local... Lo Lower level bureaucrats and elected governors have been giving our administration a tough time. They've been slow to implement new laws we passed and have directed, directly opposed the ruling military council on various occasions and have been encouraging anti military treason. This is a situation which, we can no lo which can no longer be tolerated. From here on out, all provincial governors and political positions, as at other administrative subdivisions of the government, will be filled with military officers as opposed to locally elected leaders or party officials. I don't have quite enough civvy factories to invest in construction, I think. Let's increase education funding and, um, not research facilities. Get the GDP up and running. How's the economy doing? That's alright. Closing in on a billion dollar deficit, but I've, I've had worst. We'll train one more round of all these guys. Actually, we don't need that many. We'll keep these three to get a full army, and then we'll work from there. I want to hold off on this just to avoid the GDP cost going up a little bit. So let's reward the loyal. Despite our best efforts, there remain a great deal of citizens unhappy with our rule. They argue that such military interference with the government is corrupt, inefficient, and harmful to citizens' participation in the government. We must show them that this isn't the case at all. Citizens are certainly allowed to participate in government should they prove to be loyal and trustworthy enough. The most major positions will be filled by military men, and we will reserve a few lo token lower tier bureaucracy jobs for the average citizen who hasn't served in other order to satisfy the people. 
There we go. So, I'm trying to think of uh, something to talk about. Um, so, it is currently the 12th. I believe uh, Mass Effect Legendary Edition is dropping the 14th. That's going to be fun for me. Um, I'm still going to be doing TNL stuff, obviously, but... Give me something else to do, a little bit. Something to break up the, uh, bit of a tediousness, potentially. Let's improve agriculture, and hire some foreign instructors as well. And I say every hand is useful, so let's get them working. During the early years of Bukharin and the Siberian plan, working conditions were awful. The Communist Party cared little for the safety of its citizens. Industrial accidents were far too common. We, however, are a far more modern and enlightened state, which cannot abide by such unnecessary losses. In light of this, the Marshal has greenlit further regulations to improve safety standards and prevent accidents that have been all too common. No man is expendable if he wished to one day rule over Russia. Have these... I don't think this front line's moved at all. I might just be tripping. But I don't think I am. At least not on this. Although this does create an interesting proposition. We fight the... F we could fight one. Or deal with one in one campaign. And then deal with the other with the next one. Non Aryan military, disciplined raiders. I feel like I'm going to have to move in and do something to change this up. Because if not, they're going to be stuck there. So I'll, I think what I'll do, I'll flip a coin at the end of this video. Uh, I'll do heads, the fr I'll make it so front wins, tails with brotherhood wins, and the other will win with the Yeltsin campaign, to make it fair. Some artillery upgrades. And let's get some enlistment benefits. I don't like the increased GDP costs, but I guess we might have to, or the, although... This wouldn't be too bad. Sale of Scandinavia. I don't like the fact that we'll have to do a war economy. That's a little rough. But, let's reach out to people. Let's start that off. With Western Siberia are firmly under our control, we can begin to participate in international politics once more. Our first task will be to establish contact with the outside world. During the warlord period, Sverdlovsk was hard-pressed to get information to and from Arkhangelsk, let alone far from nations like the U.S. With the region quickly stabilizing under our control, however, we establishing contact shouldn't be any trouble at all. Should we be successful, our priority as a nation will be to regain recognition on the world stage, perhaps even to be recognized as a legitimate successor to the state to Russia and or the Soviet Union. Additionally, we should endeavor to begin trade negotiations with these larger powers, such as the United States and Japan, as well as our neighbors. There we are. So, whenever they have their elections, if they didn't already... Right now, it seems that the Decemberist would be, uh... They'd probably have the upper edge.
With our unification of West Siberia, many foreign powers have become interested in the new nation. A plan was made to conduct relations with other foreign powers. Rudolf has announced today the construction of the Foreign Affairs Office in Sverdlovsk. Many nations outside of the German sphere have taken a liking to a strong and independent Russia, and many may be interested in providing us with limited aid and recognition. We also have many resources other nations may want, so the Foreign Affairs Office will also work in conducting trade. However, our rivals across the border are also interested in having relations with these foreign powers. We may have to compete for this aid, although we are confident in our ability to establish functional relations with all those who hold an interest with us. It's about time we made friends. Um, let's contact Rome. The Italians are in control, are control of one of the largest single markets on Earth. Their empire stretching from bountiful Italy to oil-rich Arabia to the Suez and Egypt. Some of the greatest market potentials on Earth, not to mention the massive consumer base they control. It would be foolish to at least not attempt to get it for the door. We will send a delegation to Rome to establish diplomatic relations and then attempt to begin negotiating trade. Should all go well, we will have a new trading partner and access to Italian financial institutions. I imagine it will go well, only one way to find out. Uh, the problem with that is that we'll have to wait until next time, ladies and gentlemen, because I have to cut it here. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, leave a like. If not, feel free to dislike. If you want to see more of this content in the future, hit the sub button for my uploads every weekday, as well as occasionally Saturdays. If you have any comments, feedback, concern, anything sort, leave them in the comment section below. I read all the comments again. I appreciate any feedback you might have for me. If you want to chat, play games, anything sort, check out my Discord. If you want to see my monthly Patreon, if you want to see me do this, this sort of stuff live on Twitch, I'll put your channel description box below. That's it for now, ladies and gentlemen. My name has been Dogwell33. I thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.